The pressure is getting worse because the streets, the streets are harsh. Hey besties, welcome back to another video and if you're new here, hi, my name is Tamina and today's video is going to be so chilled and so laid back because all we're doing today is removing my braids which I've had in for like three and a half months. They weren't like this, they had like cute beads at the end, I'll insert a picture and yeah, now it's time to take them out and I thought I'd do it with you guys while reacting to your secrets and dilemmas which you sent me on Instagram. You know how when you take out your hair, you want to watch like some Netflix. You guys are going to be my Netflix and I'm going to keep everyone completely anonymous because I saw some of the dilemmas and secrets and y'all are some, some of y'all are messy, okay? So yeah, um, basically I'm going to start with this side and then do this side last. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because all my reactions are going to be super, um, organic just because I didn't react to them. I was reading them and I was like, oh my god, what what am I going to say about this, you know? So yeah, let's let's start the video. My phone is actually dying and I don't know how my phone dies while I'm at home. It makes no sense to me, but yeah. I have this fear of cutting uh, my braids and then I end up cutting like my natural hair. And honestly, it's just being delusional because there's no way my natural hair reaches here honestly like to just be honest should we cut some more okay i don't do i have scissors um okay let's see let's see let's start with the first secret and dilemma the first one is pretty interesting the person says whether to tell a guy i like them or not though they seem completely and interested in me I'll take this one because yeah I need to take this one so I see this TikTok and I see a lot of like memes around this when it's like when someone is completely uninterested in me and not showing any attention and me completely ignoring and I've never understood it because I feel like I'm the complete opposite when somebody doesn't match my energy then I start to get embarrassed and when my embarrassment builds I literally stay away from that person um, and stop liking them. It actually kills the crush or whatever I have for you when I start to get embarrassed. And I don't know if that's self-respect or the fear of embarrassment or if the fear of embarrassment is low-key self-respect. But my take on this one is if a person, if a guy likes you, you will know. You won't be confused at all. I've seen guys and um, how they act around people they like and there's no confusion you can tell five seconds after walking into a room or something so I'd say do not tell him unless there's like an indication unless there's some promise you know like you feel like he feels you sometimes and then sometimes he doesn't so maybe like you feel like there's a vibe there but you're not sure but if you feel like he's completely uninterested your words those are the words you used then please don't find someone who's interested in you it will be so much more fun i'm not against shooting your shot at all i'm for shooting your shot when there's some promise like when you've when you sense that somebody likes you even a bit I, yeah <laughs> okay second one i have two boyfriends temi this has been going on for more than a year now and i love both so so much and i know people will say choose the second one but i can't one is extremely good in bed and the other one is extremely rich the not so rich one is really fun but can be toxic the other one is just a good guy please advise this is a packed one god i feel so unequipped to answer this one so i'm just going to react to it because i don't know i'm not going to lie to you i don't know but here's my two cents it's really interesting um because i feel like you've said you're in love with both of them and my first i have so many questions first of all that must be emotionally taxing um because loving two people so so much must be a lot because even loving one person must be is is emotionally taxing okay so the fact that you say you love both but for different reasons is interesting because i feel like it's not only about emotional attachment um and as the famous song what was that song love ain't enough 
Sometimes love ain't enough. I, yeah, that song is so true because you can love somebody, but then, like, like you said, one is toxic. Honestly, my honest opinion, I would get rid of the, the one who can be toxic. <laughs> because, listen, we are young. Do we have time for toxicity? If someone is being toxic, they need to take their own journey and heal. I'm sorry. Like, go heal, especially if they're not showing any signs of wanting to heal or to actually address their toxicity. Then leave. And don't feel bad about it, honestly, because yeah god we don't have time for toxic people who don't want to actually put in the work to not be toxic because i feel like each one of us is toxic but the difference is there's some people who are willing to work on their toxicity and some people who are very comfortable into their toxicity they're like i'm toxic and what about it you know so i would say the toxic one um yeah <laughs> yeah but wait, to add on that one, I feel like everybody has certain things that are important to them in a relationship. So, for example, some people, like, the economic value of the relationship will be last on the list, whereas emotional attachment and, like, things like them having a spark or them having a connection are fast and, like, economic is last. So I feel like you need to rank what's most important to you in terms of a happy relationship what you think would be a happy relationship for you so what because everyone has a different like hierarchy of what's important to them in a relationship so i feel like when you rank which factors are most important to you then it will be easy for you to choose um because you'll be able to see who you'll be more happy with i guess i don't know if this is a very mechanical way of approaching it because feelings do play a big part but i feel i feel i mean, I mean that's what i do <laughs> that's what i do literally damn that's a hard one though the pressure is getting worse because listen to this one i once did things with a boy who had a girlfriend but i really liked him so I didn't care. Okay, that's what it says, but okay. Girlfriend thinks he is loyal. I'm debating whether I should tell her or not. The infamous debate of I come to you as a woman. This, this one, mm, this one is tough, right? Because first of all, I have so many questions. Are you friends with the woman? Because I feel like this whole coming to someone as a woman thing is really interesting because it's like what the other woman is usually hoping to achieve is to get the man for herself right but my question is you want to inherit a cheating man for yourself i know inherit is not the right word but like once let's say okay you approach her as a woman right they break up you want this man? I know you like him, okay? I know you said you like him, but he cheated with you. What makes you think he's not going to cheat on you? I don't know. That's usually my thing because it's like if there's a man who can cheat with you and form like an emotional attachment to you while he's cheating, I don't know what's going to stop him from doing the same when now we are together. And that's the scary part. It's like do i really want this man like what are you hoping to achieve when you go to her as a woman is my question because babes i don't think you want to you don't want somebody's cheating man okay you just don't do you want those problems in your life please or do you are you in your healing girl era you know <laughs> next one is i don't know if this is somebody shooting their shot but they say, I intend to meet you and have a conversation someday. Funny thing about it, it feels certain. Honestly, yeah, manifest probably is gonna happen. Especially if you live in Nairobi. I feel like Nairobi is so small that we're probably going to meet like next month. Probably, you know. So I'm looking forward to that though. You seem interesting. So that's gonna be an interesting one. 
most of the time society goes through like a lot of relationship problems but i think we also need to talk about how like friendship problems are just as stressful and just as draining sometimes because i'm kind of going through the same thing right now where it's like i do have a friend like that um and honestly i think it just all comes down to boundaries and i was watching my friend's story the other day and they were talking about how when you set boundaries like the fact that you just set the boundary most people usually just like sit back and be like yeah i've now told this person my boundary and so it's on them to enforce it and it's on them to like take the steps and they were like no it's kind of on you to first of all communicate the boundary which is usually like a hard thing in itself to do so it's like communicating like how you said they take away from the friendship without replenishing it communicate to them the ways that they do this or the way that they've been doing this and then once you communicate it here's the catch guys you have to enforce it so let's say um they do it again right you have to enforce it right then and there like no i already told you this was my boundary this this and that and it's like the more you learn how to enforce boundaries the more you're going to lose friends and honestly that might feel terrible not might that will that will feel terrible because you feel like am i a bad person for like putting my foot down and not doing this and that and you feel like you might end up feeling like a bad person for enforcing your boundaries for communicating and enforcing your boundaries but i just like you to know that if somebody is going to be in your life and if somebody is going to be not worthy really but if somebody if you're going to be putting in all this energy for somebody because i know people put a lot of energy into their friendships and it does take energy from like listening to like like actually being there for them and all this and it's supposed to feel natural and if you're going to put in that natural energy for somebody then i feel like they need to put that natural energy for you back and that includes like respecting your boundaries and if somebody is not going to respect your boundaries it's kind of time to let them go and as sad as that sounds it's like it's going to keep taking from you then it's going to pour in you and i know there's some seasons where it's like there's sometimes in friendship seasons where it's going to be like you're putting in more than you're being given and what's supposed to happen in a healthy friendship is that this is supposed to regulate maybe sometimes you put in more than you're being given but maybe sometimes they put in more than they're giving um then you're giving them so honestly i feel like if that's not the case and you don't see that like regulating in the near future then you just have to let them go babes it's sad but it's what you have to do for yourself you know that's why self-love is so hard um it's much more easy to people please and i was reading somewhere that people pleasing it doesn't come from a place of love but it comes from a place of fear a place of fear as i said of being perceived as a bad person or not being perceived as nice usually you want to be perceived as nice people um and we might do a lot of people pleasing and sacrifice ourselves a lot for that but that's not love that's that's fear you know okay next one just realized i cheated in all my past relationships y'all y'all be wilding all like all clean clean like wow okay Kind of worried I might get to that point in my current one. Yo. <laughs> that one is just funny to me. And you know why it's funny? It's the self-awareness for me. They said, you know what? To be honest, all of them, I have cheated. Now, in this current one, okay, I might get to that point too. And it's like, okay, I just like to know what, what makes people cheat. Like, I know there are a variety of different answers, but, like, because, like, sometimes I look at people in relationships and I ask myself, because we're in 2022, there's so many new templates on how to 
you know, not be in a relationship while still getting all the benefits of a relationship. Like, you know, there's been friends with benefits and then there's been situationships and then there's even like polyamory now. So it's like, what's the problem? There's so many different templates. We've evolved. We've evolved for ways, um, we found ways for humans to get what they want without actually labeling, right? So many things you can say these days. I don't like labels. Um, I don't subscribe to rigid, like societal labels and rigid societal expectations of what a boyfriend and girlfriend should be, you know? Like, <laughs> there's so many ways to navigate this, okay? Um, I guess my thing would be find ways to navigate this so that the people in relationships can actually, you know, be in healthy relationships. Because you don't have to be in one, babes. You really don't. You know, you don't have to date just to be in a relationship. Find ways. Find ways to suggest this re most recent um, dating... I don't even know what to call them. Like, just find a way. <laughs> and honestly, I know that's easier said than done. Like, don't be in a relationship for the sake of being in a relationship. Because the streets... The streets are harsh. It's the streets are cold. The streets don't even be having that much potential. <laughs> to be honest, like sometimes you're just in the streets and you're like, "Hey, eh, this this is tough," you know. So that's why I would suggest the the other ones, like the other ways we found to um, avoid relationships, but s still get the benefits of the relationship. Maybe just have a talk with your partner right and just tell them like you're not you're not giving monogamy yeah like <laughs> monogamy is not for you it doesn't i don't feel like from what you've said in that text um monogamy is not for you yeah like i'm i'm just sensing it's just just my opinion i feel like it's yeah it's not for you Okay, so I'm going to do a bit more off camera and then come back because we have a long way to go. And this message is juicy, shocking, I'm bamboozled by some of them. My jaw is on the floor. So yes, I'm going to do some off camera, then I'll be back. Okay guys, so I'm back. I did this whole side and then I did the back for this one and now we're just left with these ones. They're like 10. So hopefully this will be done. It's been a long day and I just want to finish. But yeah, um, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's see what else you guys said on Instagram. So someone says, I broke up with my boyfriend of one year, but somehow a guy I talked to for a week broke my heart more. Let me tell you, this has reminded me of the time, there's a time that I used to just date people I wasn't so into, get this, because I knew the heartbreak would be less, yeah, psychotic. Um, so when this person says that, I completely get it, because sometimes you're just in a relationship but you're not even in love or you don't get to the point of being in love with someone and i remember somebody was actually asking what's the difference between um like a friend and a romantic partner aside from that one is platonic and one isn't and when you ask this question you realize that there's no real like answer because people will say like i want to marry my best friend right so it's like you form the friendship, but then just because now it's not platonic, it's like a relationship. But can't, is the only thing that's different between friendships and romantic relationships, the platonic factor? I don't know. But I get you, honestly, the person who wrote this, I understand. I don't even think it's weird. I feel like you can form a stronger connection with someone you've met in a week then you can form with someone you've met in a year and it depends on so many factors like it could be that you and that person are just more like you fit more together or it could be that that person is more open about their feelings so you connect faster so you can find somebody else has like opened up about things you've never been opened up to 
in like a year and that's why you form the connection quickly but yeah i just thought it was oh that was an interesting one okay let's start on another one so yeah this one this is a long one so it's let me just read it out i'm currently in a weird situation with my classmate i found him attractive but i never had the guts to tell him how i felt long story short my bestie told him and he admitted he has feelings for me next plan was to go meet him and talk about it but that really didn't happen because we hooked up Ooh. the thing is this all happened in a span of one week it does bother me a lot since we've barely made an emotional connection oh that's a hard one because it's like funny that's so funny first of all you said i went over to talk but then we hooked up instead that's so funny um um the thing is with this one this isn't i feel like this is a confusing one because your bestie told him and he admitted to you to the bestie that he had feelings for you i feel like you shouldn't feel bad about it because first of all if it was completely consensual everything then you shouldn't feel bad about it especially since you're saying you've not yet made an emotional connection but then if he already told your bestie he has feelings for you then you can begin to make that emotional connection now just like the next time you go over make sure to talk instead and just tell him or you could yeah just make sure to set up maybe an outdoor date <laughs> to tell him you could go for like a picnic you could go for something more outdoors so that you actually have a chance to talk um so if that's bothering you then try and meet as much as you can outside the house so you could be able to actually create that emotional connection because i feel like when you're outside you genuinely have to talk and you genuinely have to um, not make an emotional connection but you basically have to talk because that's basically the only thing you guys can do um if you're a bit nervous maybe go for something less intimate than a picnic although i feel like that's what you need you need something where it's the two of you and you're like talking and not something like with an activity but since you're feeling really bad about it maybe do an activity first and then go do something where you sit down and talk after and just be honest about your feelings okay we're gonna do two so the first one is i really want us to have editing dates but i'm not sure if it's weird or if i should just shoot my shot shoot your shot okay i'm going to reply to you right after this video we should have an editing date um i don't want to be roommates with my best friend anymore and i don't know how to tell her mm, that's a hard one remember what i was saying earlier about how when you communicate your boundaries um you may end up losing friends um because she might take that as you don't want to be friends with her anymore so i feel like if you end up telling her which i think you should you should clarify that it's not that you don't want to be best friends anymore if that's what you want try and separate the moving situation from your friendship so if you're communicating make sure you communicate that you would like you no longer want to be roommates but not because you don't want to be her friend anymore but because you feel like actually that could end up hurting the friendship more than it could benefit the friendship so i feel like try and separate the friendship from the moving out situation because she's going to feel like you don't want to be friends with her anymore and try and just reiterate that moving out doesn't mean the ending of friendship unless you don't want to be friends anymore then i think it should be easier to just say then like vibes yeah like it's been good but it's not looking good bro you know because right now you sound like you're trapped like like mama <laughs> You cannot escape you cannot get out and if you don't communicate your feelings you're gonna be trapped feeling and i feel like the home situation is the worst um in terms of if you feel trapped or unhappy in your home situation it's terrible because you low-key or high-key you literally have to go there every day and sleep there and basically spend like half your day and your life in that home so you really have to tell her just gather some gather some confidence make sure you tell her in a really nice way because 
um, I remember my therapist said sometimes it's not what you say it's the language you use to communicate things to someone because sometimes you can be saying something and you say it really rude or you say it in a way that could hurt someone but if you use good language and consider it language um, what you're saying will like set in better so yeah I'm sorry good luck that's that's hard okay last ones this one is wild this person said, I enjoy taking revenge and watching people I hate suffer. Then they add, it's a Scorpio thing, please. I get you, babe. My friends who used to gossip about me now repeating their academic years, such things. I have so many questions. First of all, you saying it's a Scorpio thing, not gonna lie. It's true. Did you hear about the dog that the owner abandoned and then like, so many years later it found the owner and bit them and people were like this dog is a scorpio or the way the people were saying the elephant that like went to the the funeral of the poacher was a scorpio honestly yeah i'm not gonna lie scorpios do like to avenge and do like to take revenge but here's the thing babes you get over it you'll start realizing that people who hate you don't really deserve your energy like that because it does take energy to to revenge whether you think about it in any way it takes energy and my other question was was them repeating the academic years like your fault because you said you like to take revenge or you just liked to watch them suffer like repeating the academic year um i mean i get that that's why I was saying, like, do, and it's not, it's, it's literally not worth your energy. Like, once you start to detach from things that are not even worth your energy, you'll be so peaceful. It's so peaceful. Like, even your Scorpio urge to revenge goes away. It's like, most of the time you'll be like, honestly, the universe is going to take care of it, not me, because that's too much energy going towards, like, negative things. And you know when your energy goes towards negative things that same energy just comes back to you because what you put out in the world babes it comes back to you so that's that's all i'll say <laughs> this one says i started doing online therapy from home without my parents knowledge um tagging the sessions as work reason being they don't believe in mental health issues and i'm not okay it's super scary Honestly, the fact that you've taken it into your own hands to start doing like online therapy sessions and lying to them it's work Honestly, that's amazing because you said I'm not going to suffer alone I'm going to do what I have to do to get the help I need and honestly first of all, that's amazing I want you to know that's so amazing and I love that for you I'm so sorry that your parents don't believe in mental health issues I don't know why you would not believe in mental health issues but at the same time I do understand not justifying them but I do understand where parents come from in the form of where they don't believe in mental health issues because they believe that they went through worse and that we're just a spoiled generation and it's so sad that that's the outlook because honestly when you're parenting it's one of those things where you have to I feel like you just have to get rid of your own misconceptions and beliefs and just try and be the best that's for your child. Doesn't mean that it changes your belief, but it's just like do the, doing the best for your child. But honestly, I love that you're doing the online therapy. I hope it goes really well for you. I'm so sorry you're so scared. Ugh, there's so many. I'm gonna look for resources to put in the description box because that's honestly terrifying and sad. And I wish just more parents would believe their children when they say they're going through something, you know? But parenting's hard, bro. And, uh, bro, this one, this one was so sad. I felt so bad when I read it. I'm so sorry. Honestly, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for sharing your secrets, dilemmas, everything. Some were more like questions. I'm just going to reply them in their inbox. Now I'm going to take the rest of these out and then I'll just come show you guys the final, like, when I've combed out my hair and everything, and then we can end this video. But yeah, this has been so fun. We're messy in Nairobi, but I'm sure those texts were not even like a glimpse. But like, some were more messy, I couldn't even read them. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll, I'll be back, I'll be back. Okay guys, there's a lot going on with my hair right now, so let me go wash it, because I know my wash day is going to take long. 
and yeah thank you so much for watching this video thank you for sharing everything that you shared with me it was so fun reacting um it was just really fun i really enjoyed making this video hope you guys liked it too and i'll see you guys in the next one bye besties